okay? and that is uh, similarity of figures. Okay? <clears throat> I haven't talked about similar figures, but I've talked about the ratio of parts. But anytime you have similar figures, and similar figures are represented using this symbol. It's uh, just to the left of the number one on your keyboard. Okay? It's called a tilde or tilde, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's pronounced both ways. And that means that you have figures that have all the same corresponding angles that are equal to each other, and all their corresponding parts are proportional. And so it basically means that figures that are similar can be enlarged or reduced proportionally, and they can fit on any other similar figure. And in talking about circles, all circles are similar to one another. And is it true that we could take this smaller circle, enlarge it, and it would fit directly on top of the larger circle? Yeah, it'll fit. Any angles will be perfectly on top of each other, and any sides or lengths will be proportional. They'll have the, they will be the same length. Okay, so if two things are similar, what it means is that uh, their their ratio of parts will always be consistent. And so that means that if you had this circle with a radius of two, and another circle, let's say, with a radius of three. Any one-dimensional parts between these two similar figures are always going to have that exact same ratio. Okay, so if I call the ratio of parts will be represented as a P, lowercase p, with an arrow. And ratio of parts have some specific ratio. So in this particular case, if the ratio of parts is 2 to 3, what that means is every one-dimensional measurement has this same ratio. So what would be the ratio of the circumferences between these two circles? 2 to 3. What would be the ratio of their diameters? 2 to 3. Any one-dimensional measurement. Okay, so any um, arc length, corresponding arc lengths would have a ratio of 2 to 3. Okay, now, any angle measures formed in these triangles will be equal, but any length measurements will be uh, proportional in the ratio 2 to 3, or in the more general sense, M to N. And so this is true for all one-dimensional parts. And now if we take these two circles here and we identify their areas, what would be the area of this small circle? Pi r squared or 4 pi. And what would be the area of this larger circle? Three, pi r squared, 3 squared is. Okay, so what we can see here is when we talk about the ratio of areas, which I'll designate with a lowercase a and an arrow, how do the ratio of parts relate to the ratio of areas that we see here? 4 pi to 9 pi reduces to 4 to 9. So what did we do to the parts to get the ratio of the areas? We squared it, right? So anytime you want to find how the areas of two similar figures relate to one another, if you know what the ratio of their parts is, the ratio of their areas is that ratio squared. And again, it ties into the fact that we're dealing with two-dimensional parts or two-dimensional areas. Okay, so notice that here our powers are 1 for one-dimensional parts. Here our powers are 2 for two-dimensional pieces or elements, the areas. Okay, so what do you think would happen if I'm talking about a volume? Even though we won't get to this until chapter 8. Uh, would it be, uh, be the arrow would be M Perfect. For volumes, we'd be talking about three dimensions. Okay, and so the three dimensions means we're going to cube it. So if we looked at what would be a three-dimensional circle? A sphere, right? So if we took these, if these were two spheres with the ratio of radii 2 to 3, what do you think the ratio of their uh, volumes would be? 2 cubed, which is 8, to 3 cubed, which is 27. Okay, and so this is consistent for any similar figures, but you're going to 